And now to my explainer tonight. Now, after four days of hearing, the appellants and the respondents in the case against the Building Bridges Initiative-led referendum push, the judges took seven weeks to deliberate on the petitions that were made by both sides in order to make their decision known on the 20th of August. The seven judges of the Court of Appeal, that's four men and three women, led by presiding Judge Daniel Musinga, will render their verdict after determining the petitions that were made by the five appellants in the case. They are the President of Kenya, the Attorney General, the IEBC, ODM leader Raila Odinga, and the BBI Secretariat. Now, they will also be considering the prayers that were made by the respondents who filed their grounds for affirmation. This, of course, together with a comprehensive look at the orders that were given by this five-judge bench at the High Court in their verdict. So just what will the Court of Appeal judges be making a decision on? Well, it will be largely based on this decision by the High Court. And first, it is whether the doctrine of basic structure is applicable in Kenya. Now, the High Court found that it does and that it limits the power to amend the basic structure of the Constitution and the eternity clauses. They will also have to make a finding, of course, on whether the president can be sued. The High Court determined that civil proceedings can be instituted against the president. Now, another key determination from the Court of Appeal tomorrow will be what constitutes a popular initiative and whether the president can initiate a constitutional amendment process through a popular initiative that is outlined in Article 257 of the Constitution. Now, that seven-judge appeal bench will then have to make a decision on whether to uphold a High Court order or overturn it that stated that the BBI Steering Committee has no legal capacity to initiate any action towards amending the Constitution and that the President contravened Chapter 6 of the Constitution. More importantly, will they uphold a High Court's order that the entire process to amend the Constitution was unconstitutional? Now, remember, they will also have to decide on whether the electoral management body is properly constituted to collect and verify signatures and whether there was a legal framework at the time to govern the same. Now, one of the other sticky issues that is at the heart of this case is the fate of the 70 proposed, or rather the proposed new 70 constituencies. The High Court ordered that the allocation of those new electoral units and the attempt to direct the IEBC on its function of delimitation of the constitu constituencies was unconstitutional. So here's another thing. Now, the judges will also cover the submissions that were made over four days by both the appellants and the respondents in this case. I want you to watch just some of the appellants' arguments that were made in court. As of 30th June 2020, there was no task force, there was no select committee. And an effort to tie those two bodies to this initiative is therefore futile. The law that the, uh, that the court purported to rely on to find that there was no quorum was no longer law because it had been, it had been declared to be unconstitutional by a court of competent jurisdiction. The president was never served with the proceedings despite the fact that he was sued in his private capacity. So just how will this seven-judge bench make a decision? Now, of the 23 orders that were given by the High Court in their judgment, there are about 18 that would directly determine if we have a referendum and how that would be conducted. Now, the appellate judges can decide to either uphold some or all of the orders of the High Court, or overturn some or all of the same. Now, a decision is binding if it is made by a majority of judges on this bench. Now, because there are seven of them, they will need a majority from four or more coming to a similar verdict. So just to note that there will be no chance of a deadlock because of the odd number.
Now, the judgment can be either unanimous, as we saw at the High Court, with all the five judges led by Justice Professor Joel Ngugi arriving at a similar decision, or there could be one or more dissenting judgments, up to three, of course. Now, um, if you're wondering, there is precedence to this. You remember the Supreme Court presidential election petition of 2017? We saw dissenting judgments from two of the judges. Now, those are just some scenarios of how things could go tomorrow. But whichever way they decide Friday, the judgment will certainly be key in determining the constitutional and political outlook for the country in the near future. And you believe that we will definitely be having this for you live tomorrow with coverage in the way only we can here on Citizen Television. That's my explainer tonight.